Do, 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 do. Oh. Hey, it's Stephanie. This is Wrestling Color Podcast right here on YouTube. Make sure you thumbs up the video. Follow. Hit me on Instagram, Twitter, and I do have a Pinterest that I post cute pictures on. So go follow me over there too, because you ain't doing nothing on your lunch break. You could be Pinterest, Pinteresting it up, right? Okay, so what we talking about? You see the picture. So yes, I'm a little bit late, but a lot of things have transpired since this Brandy Rose situation. So right now, everything's about representation. Everything's always been about res representation over here at Wrestling Color Podcast. That's what I talk about. It ain't for everybody, but the people who follow me and the people who enjoy my content know I don't play about my culture, representation, black Americans. I don't play about none of that, okay? I celebrate it. We just got seeing the Lucha Brothers, um, Pentagon, and the other guy, what's his name, Elder, Elder Zero, whatever, just when the, the AEW tag team, they came out in full Mexican regalia. They was representing their culture. If you watch the backstage scrummage, which I do enjoy those cause that AEW does because it gives more legitimacy and, and importance to the product. Them, them two Mexican wrestlers, luchadors, were so happy and excited that they got to represent their culture. They got to represent who they was. They got to show the world and everything. I love that shit. I love it. Okay? So when I, as a black woman, say I want to see more black women, I want to see a representation of me. I want little girls to see people like Jay Cargill, um, what's his name, Bobby Lashley, uh, Naomi, um, Chris Bay, Moose. I want to see Ember Moon, uh, Bianca Belair. I want to see little kids look at that and say, I want to do that. Even the Samoans got damn good representation. They just got the, the, the Usos' little brother just signed with, a, with a WWE development. They got damn good representation. Little Samoan kid wake up like, oh, I want to be the head of the table. Representation matters. Whether white folks like it or not, or other folks who seem to be confused. With that being said, in the black community, specifically the black American community, I don't know about what Africans do or whatever. You know, they black too, but, you know, there's a different culture. We have uh, different levels of uh, black folks. You got the black folks who know, and you got the black folks that kind of grew up around white folks, so they kind of out the loop. Then you got, like, the ghetto blacks, and then you got the, the, the Jack and Jill blacks and all that old shit, right? So, and then you got the blacks that's, like, you know, mixed relationships, and you don't really expect much from them, especially if it's a, if it's a black woman and a white man, you can pretty much be all right knowing that they get it. But if it's a black dude with a white woman, it's some confusion, it's some confusion all the time. And their kids exhibited this, right? So I'm, put, I'm putting y'all on game. So don't be like, what the fuck she talking about? This is some real shit. So Brandy Rose is that black woman with a white dude who's an anomaly. Because I thought she got it. When AEW first started, they was touting all kinds of representation. Oh, we gonna be diverse. We gonna do this, that, and the third. She was like, Cody was like, I don't see color. She said, well, if you don't see my blackness, then you don't see me. And all this bullshit. So we go on and on and on. Then she came out with that boombastic ass ghetto promo. Everybody was like, what? Because that ain't who she is. And she was like, oh, I'm from Detroit. You know, that's how I get down. No, no, it's not, sweetie. You literally cosplay a ghetto black girl and it was cool i thought it was a little bit too much when you was going back and forth with jay cargill because even jay cargill wasn't even coming at you hard the way you was coming after her behind your husband but whatever it was cute for some so with that being said you know folks is minding their fucking business on instagram and twitter and going back and forth about wrestling and being goofy and shit like they usually do and she decided on this particular day, which was August 27th, to just say, literally, this might start some shit, but let's talk. I see a lot of people complaining on here that there aren't enough black t talent featured in wrestling. Yet, in capital letters, when black talent is out there busting it in the main events and holding championships, where's the love? Am I missing it? So all the black folks collectively turned around and was like, girl, what? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? 
and proceeded to drag Brandy Rhodes straight into the depths of Twitter chaos, as they should. Even I got in there and said, listen, Brandy, you don't want to do this with us. I don't know what the fuck you were doing, but Bianca, Ibl, Bianca Belair lost that SmackDown championship in that fashion. All hell broke loose. Kofi Kingston got beat in six seconds after his, um, when he was up to, you know, defend his title. All hell broke loose. Bobby Lashley, we celebrate. Okay? We celebrate. Um, who else uh, got the titles? Uh, the, the, the guys on Impact. Impact has a whole roster full of black dudes holding the title. Uh, we celebrate. When Keith Lee won both the NXT and the World, um, the, the mid-championship, we was over here through the fucking moon, okay? So let's not do that. Like, let's not act like we don't ask for shit and people either going to do it or ignore it. See, black folks in the United States of America, we ain't new to this. We true to this. If we got a fucking problem, we ain't got no problem causing, causing chaos for other people because y'all don't pay attention until we cut the fuck up. We the blueprint... For social change in the world, okay? Black people are the blueprint. We don't like some shit, we gonna tell you. And then everybody else, you just gonna get on board. Like, y'all, look at the black folks is riled up. Something done went wrong. Get on board. Nine times out of ten, we are absolutely correct with what the fuck is wrong. We are the moral compass of the world. We are the canary in the motherfucking coal mine, okay? Brandy, you should know better. So she got dragged, as she should. Folks let her know what the fuck is going on. Folks let her know why her, her promotion is called almost exclusively white, because it is, which is AEW, okay? Now, we just got through Big Swole. It's like, y'all y'all talking about representation while I'm representing. Come watch me. I think everybody went over to Big Swole and Diamante's match this past dark. And I saw it go from 12,000 to like 42,000 views. People was like, buy the shirts. You know, support these folks. We do that. Black wrestling draws. Always. Draws, draws. Not saying, but whatever. That's a whole nother conversation. Always has. Leo Rush, when he came on the scene, he was doing all that flipping and shit. Everybody in the audience was like, oh, go back and watch the clip. Oh, y'all got Reginald flipping and carrying on. Everybody, wow, look at that. Bobby Lashley is a fucking magnificent species. Like, I don't even know what to say. He's built like a, a juggernaut. First African-American, black American to hold that belt outside of Ron Simmons in WCW. Okay? We not going to go into that. That is just what it is. We want representation. Period. So a situation came up with me and him. I actually did a... a, a Get to know me and him. And I was very clear about why I don't care for me and him's character. Because it's not her. If if you're doing something that's not coming across natural, it's going to show. That fucking head B.I.C., her wrestling with Tim's and all that old rough exterior bullshit like she grew up in the ghetto, it don't show. It, it, is not, it doesn't fit her. That's why when she was in a, a scene with Bianca Belair, she came across off and confused because Bianca is natural in her quote unquote ghetto, ghetto girl attire. That's all I'm saying. Now when me again was over there on Impact, she was deep in the, all into the Korea, Korean side shit, Korea boo shit, or whatever she was representing. More likable. Even her, her gear and everything was more realistic because that's how she grew up. Just be yourself. Don't try to get into all that graffiti shit and I'm in here. It's not, it didn't work in NXT because she never got over. I don't care what nobody said. And it ain't going to work on the main roster because now I don't know what the fuck happened to her. And I, 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 I applaud her that she stuck by her man as she should when he was fighting the COVID. So someone questioned me and him's blackness. Everybody was talking about they want black representation. They want to see black stars. So a guy was like, somebody said, yeah, well, me and him, you know, she's, and then he said, no, we talking about black, black. Let's not see and act like we didn't know what he was talking about. Me and him is biracial. She is black and Korean, okay? She is biracial, mixed race woman. Period. Just like Sasha Banks. She's biracial, half black, mixed with, I think, Filipino some shit. These are mixed folks, 
Okay? How they want to um categorize themselves, it ain't got a motherfucking thing to do with me. But what y'all not going to do is push a racist rule called the one drop rule. That is racist. It is from a racist practice. It's no different than the quantum, blood quantum for Native Americans. The whole point of those two rules was to literally take from people who deserve. When the slave masters had sex with these uh, Native Americans and, and enslaved people and had kids with them, they literally came up with different ways of labeling the blackness in the person. If you had one drop of blackness, you was black. Throwed you down to, the, to where the black folks went. When you were supposed to get whatever was owed to you through inheritance. If you don't have enough of what white folks consider blood quantum, you could not consider Native American. There are full-blooded Native Americans who can't even get on the dolls' rolls or get on whatever rolls the, the civilized nations, quote-unquote, have because they don't got the money to get their blood drawn so they can see how much Native Americanness they got in them. Don't ever refer to those rules. In the case of me and Yim, that woman says she, she is half black. Her father is black American. Great. But when that guy said, no, I want to see black, black folks, he was talking about just basic black people. That's what he said. Ain't no big deal in that. I understood what he said. Everybody wants to get trivial and, and, and pull out semantics. I know it's got to be difficult for biracial kids who want to be in one spot and want to be in another spot and both is like button heads. Because I'm going to tell you, I never heard biracial, a lot of biracial people talking about, oh, well, I'm white. They don't usually fight to be white. But they will fight you for that blackness. And that's not my fight. That's an identity issue on to them for them to deal with. But I never show, I have biracial family members, okay? I don't want to sound like that. I got black friends. My older, I got, I never shun. I have First of all, I'm half mixed. I'm fucking mixed with white. I can't walk around and tell y'all that because how the fuck would you know? My dad is damn near, is half white. Okay? We can't say that because we black people. We look black. But when you look like me and him, you can say, well, I'm half Korean, you know, whatever the case may be. Some people going to accept you, some ain't. That's just the way of the fucking world. I don't think we should question anyone's blackness or whiteness. We don't question nobody's whiteness. Just like we tell Native Americans, don't question the Afro-natives. There are natives that are African. You can't question them because they don't look like what you think natives are supposed to look like, which are close to white people because of them having sex and, 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 and destroying that culture. But you look at old pictures of Native Americans, they are copper-toned people. Copper-toned, okay? People with dark skin. So, me again responded and said, um, you know, hello, uh, my dad would disagree with you. He's African American. I am half black. Woo -doo -woo -doo. I do remember Bianca Belair even including me and Yim in one of her, you know, sisters are doing it for themselves, photo spread. And, and, it, and it's just something to say. We talk about representation. People want specific spe specificity in their representation. The Rock, we have an argument about that. I already told The Rock calls himself biracial. He, the Rock is not going to dismiss his Samoan side and dismiss his Canadian black side. His father is from uh, what? Uh, 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 not Sisk uh, uh, I forgot. Y'all don't talk about. He's uh, Af uh, African Canadian. Okay. He's not going to dismiss the, the Samoan side, just, but he's deeper in his Samoan side because him and his father had a strained relationship. He grew, of course, we're going to gravitate towards our mothers. So he's deep in that. But he has said, yes, I am black too. Although some would say he doesn't display the blackness like we would like, right? So when they say first champion, they put The Rock there. They put Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston is... African born and the WWE literally says African born champion out of Ghana. Even the WWE knows what's going on when they had fucking um Apollo Crews turned Nigerian going up against um Big E and Apollo Crews made a comment that he was the real African American. They know what the fuck they doing. 
Now Apollo Crews is out the picture, throw to the wayside, because I just don't know what it is that they just, you know, after Big E's feud, that, they even took their belt off, gave it to Shinsuke, and Apollo's done. But they know what's going on when it terms of culture. They know the difference. And I think you all should know the difference too. Don't know, don't question people's blackness, don't question people's whiteness. But everybody ain't black. That's, everybody is not African American. That's a distinct culture and group. And it just is what the fuck it is. So when you're on the internet and you're talking about, oh, such and such African American, somebody's like, no, they're not. No, Kofi Kingston is not African American. He was playing a Jamaican. Kofi Kingston is not Jamaican. He's an African. He is Canadian American. That's just what it is. Representation is something that we all want and crave. I don't say nothing when um, Drew McIntyre comes out in the kilt and represents his country. Fucking uh, uh, Becky Lynch comes out and represents her country. Uh, you had the Latinos battling for the, 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 to be the king of the Latinos. I don't do that. Taya Conti, she's over on AEW. She represents for Brazil. Quiet as it's kept. Brazil don't look like Taya Conti. Brazil looks like me. Okay? Dark-skinned Africans all up and through Brazil. You wouldn't know that looking at Taya Conti. Lucha, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, 619, Buyaka Buyaka. He represents for the Mexicans and for the luchadors. Don't nobody tell him he can't do that. So when black people are like, well, where the fuck is the black people? That's what we want to see. So I'm going to leave y'all with something Brandy Rose said because she had to come on out. She proceeded to talk about her having a baby and going through depression and what the baby does for her. And in a bizarre twist, she said, I don't mean to say dumb stuff on the internet. A lot of times I'm thinking I'm starting a fun discussion and whatever I said gets tanked wrong and turns into a whole thing. Even though she literally said, I'm going to start some shit. That doesn't really have anything to do with this. It's a lot. It's, it happens a lot. Ha ha. And it doesn't really bother me, but seems to bother a lot of others. So I just wanted to address it while I'm right there. So in case you think any of these things, let me clear it up. I support BLM. I don't know what Black Lives Matter movement has to do with black representation in wrestling, but okay. I'm a proud black woman and my husband just happens to be white. All right. We clearly see you black, but you one of those special black folks. Uh, my family doesn't support Trump. Okay. Not judging others who do. We just don't. I don't think I'm the first person to have an interracial baby. No, you're not. I've seen plenty of them. But, you know, Cody and his tone-deaf ass promo. Jeez. And I do honestly love and try my best. I don't run the company. I don't want the women's division. I enjoy the CBO work, and I love wrestling. Back to postpartum. <sighs> Just, Brandy, don't start shit. If you, if you can't deal with the shit that you started, don't start shit, sweetie. Just focus on your postpartum. I know what it is. I know what it's like. Breastfeed your beautiful child, Liberty, and do your thing, and hush. Worry about heels, um, whatever... Uh, you know, shit you got going on as a CBO and do that. Because if you're not paying attention to the whole landscape of wrestling, you're going to get dragged. Now, I would also like to leave on this note from uh, the incomparable who I stand, Bianca Belair. She was featured in uh, seeher.com. She was featured on that website, Bianca Belair, WWE Smack Superstar, SmackDown Women's Champion, Royal Rumble's Champion. This is from August 20th. She posted it for everybody to see. And I think this rounds up what I'm saying and why representation matters again. Okay? She goes on to say, she says, To see my name as a WWE Superstar, SmackDown Women's Champion, and the list of SB Award winners like Serena Williams, Naomi Osaka, Candice Parker, Simone Biles. We continue to make her, her story and people want to see it. So while I'm grateful for the success I've had, I continue to, see, to seek inspiration wherever I can find it. My mama is my biggest role model and the wisest woman I know. My daddy is one of the most successful men I know who instilled me in grit and don't mess with attitude. 
being blessed with two amazing parents with love and stability encourage my confidence and my husband is a constant source of love and support okay I admire women like Regina King, Viola Davis, Issa Rae, Michelle Obama, Beyonce, and Angela Davis. They're all unapologetically who they are and utilize their talents to the full potential. As someone who tells you that you can't do something, you answer, and you answer says who, not me. She said, I believe representation is not a request, it is a requirement. Representation helps all of us understand how we fit into this world and makes us realize we can go after what we want. It's also a requirement that there's an accurate and diverse representation because we all deserve to be represented, represented and seen in our own true selves. I'm going to leave it right there. Like I said, we ain't new to this. We true to this. We want to be represented. We want to be shown. We want our children to see beautiful stuff, beautiful people, beautiful black people doing stuff, and we're not going to stop not asking for it. So with that being said, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments. Um, I think that's all I wanted to hit on. Y'all leave me and Yim alone, too. Don't don't question these biracial folks' blackness. They said they black. Let it be that. Now, somebody posted Rachel Dozal, and, and that's a conversation we could go ahead and get into because clearly we know she ain't black. But that's the problem that a lot of people are having because everybody that say they ain't black ain't, aren't black. But they want to use that blackness to capitalize. And that's another conversation for another day. I'm leaving right there. Y'all hit me in the comments, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Deuces!